In this section, we are going to see how to create a login application integrating Angular 2 and Spring 5. The notions that we are going to learn are how to create an Angular 2 single page application with Spring 5 and how to create a login Angular 2 application using Spring Security. This video is about how to create Angular 2 single page application with Spring 5. In this video, we are going to take a look at how to run a single page Angular 2 application embedded in Spring 5 and how to run a single page Angular 2 application alongside Spring 5. The first application is going to be an embedded Angular 2 application in Spring 5. To create our application, we will start again from the Spring Initializer tool. Let's open the browser and navigate to start.spring.io. As usual, to be able to use Spring 5, we need to select version 2. Name this application single page. And then we need to select the modules. Web. Lombo. H2. Rest. JPA. We already have seen Lombok and web modules. H2 is a memory database. REST repository exposes Spring Data repository over REST endpoints. JPA is the Java Persistence API. And DevTools is the module that will allow us to hot reload the Angular 2 app when we will make change to the code. But before generating the project, this time we need to switch to the full version and change the packaging from JAR to WAR. The reason is because we are going to put the front-end code inside our back-end code. So we need a WAR file in order to deploy it. Create project. When the import of the project inside your editor is complete, let's start the project to check that everything is working fine. Before starting the application, let's comment out this part here. For some reason, this thing doesn't make my application starting. And let's re-import the dependency inside uh, the main project. The application starts, which is a good sign. Let's stop the server. The next step is to create the Angular 2 application. To do so, we need to navigate inside the main folder of our Spring application and run the Angular CLI command. When the generation is complete, we can switch back to the editor. Now we have also the front-end folder here. And let's execute the node modules folder to make our editor faster. When we build our front-end application, usually the build file go inside a director that is configured inside the Angular CLI.json. The output directory is the dist folder. But to have a single page application and have our front-end files inside our back-end application, we need to put these files under our a Spring Boot project. So we are going to change now this folder to point it to our Spring project. Now all the generated file from our front-end application, Angular application, are going to be uh, placed inside source, main, resources, static. Now that we have changed the destination folder, of our Angular 2 application, we need to run the build using the Angular CLI command. From the terminal, move inside the front-end application folder, Angular 2 application, and run ng-build minus minus watch. The minus minus watch command will keep watching for change in our code. In case they will happen, it will trigger automatically a new build. And let's start also our Spring Boot application. 
Now, under the static folder, you should see all the build files from our Angular application. The server started on the 8080. If we go on the browser and we go on the localhost 8080, we now should be able to see our Angular 2 application. The app works. Now, to check how the reload of a code change works with the DevTool modules, let's try to change something in our Angular 2 application. Inside the front end folder under application, and uh, let's make a change to the app component HTML. The Angular 2 project is automatically rebuilt by uh, the command that we have run inside the terminal. But to bring this change also inside our uh, Spring Boot application, we need to press the build button. Sometimes this change takes a while in order to be built. Next step is to expose some information through our REST API using JPA, H2, and the REST repository module of Spring. Inside our Spring Boot project, we need to create a new class, the user class. This is going to be our entity for our database. The entity gets reflected to tables inside our database. And this entity is going to have an ID. And this ID has to be auto-generated. A name, a surname, and we need a constructor and some getters. When we use JPA, we also need a default constructor, empty constructor. Next step is to create the repository that will expose the information from this entity. Repository REST resource. And the name of this repository is user. User. So the information of this repository is going to be exposed under the slash user. Then we need to extend pagination sorting repository user log. It has to be an interface. When we start our application inside the database, we will not have any information. So let's change the single page application main class in order to be able to load some information at the bootstrap of the application inside the database. This method gets executed at the startup of the application. From here, we are going to load our users inside the database. To load our users inside the database, we are going to use the user repository that we have just created. Now let's change our component inside our Angular application to load the information that we are exposing to this REST endpoint inside our Angular application. 
we need to perform an HTTP call. So inside the constructor, we need to inject the HTTP. To make the example easier, I'm going to write inside here, inside the component, the HTTP call. In general, this kind of code should go inside the service to make the code cleaner. But to make the example easier, I'm going to do it inside the component. And now from the constructor, let's call this method. I subscribe. This is actually the format that the information will return from the REST endpoint. Inside the response, we have uh, this in nest at the object which is underscore embedded inside we have the users the last step is to change the html to make it able to show the users And for all the user object, we want to get a user and uh, display from him the name and the surname. Okay, there is an error here in the console. Um, the problem in this case is from the user, the user entity. Uh, it seems that I have imported here the wrong uh, uh, library for the ID. Uh, Right library is not the uh, of Spring framework data annotation, but is this one the Java persistence? Now let's try again. Okay, the application starts without any error, and the application seems to be working fine. We have the log here with the two users, and also we are making correctly here uh, the call to our backend. This is the response that our REST repository is providing us and the, these are the information that we have stored inside the database. So now we have a single page application with the front end and the back end together. And what are the pro and cons of the embedded approach? The pro are worthwhile a single deploy for front end and the back end, back end and front end on the same address and port, and the cons are slowly rebuild the front end change there is low separation of concern it doesn't scale when you have more than one backend instance for an application let's see now the other approach when we have an angular 2 application alongside the spring file to show this approach we'll reuse the same application and just making some changes we need to stop the server also we need to stop the build let's change the angular cli.json and let's put uh, again everything inside of this folder. Now the builded file will not go anymore under the Spring Boot application, but they will go inside of this folder. And let's remove all the generated file that we have inside the static folder. Let's start again the server. And now we need to check that under the 8080, we are not anymore able to see the Angular 2 application. Angular 2 application is not anymore there. We can see only 
the REST repositories that we have created before inside our application. One of the problems of having the front-end application, the back-end application running on two different addresses are the course uh, cores. In order to prevent course errors inside our Angular 2 application, we need to create a proxy config JSON file. So actually here we are saying that all the calls that goes under slash API has to be redirected on localhost 8080, which is the address of our backend application. Next step is to change also the package.json and uh, inside the package.json we need to change the start command uh, to include also our proxy configuration. From now on, to start our Angular 2 application, we have to use the npm start command. Otherwise, the proxy configuration will not be loaded. Now we need to change the context root of our uh, Spring Boot application. So let's open the application.properties file and server dot, uh, servlet context path is the property. This will make sure that all the calls, all the REST endpoints that are exposed uh, by our uh, Spring Boot application will be under slash API URL. And last change to make is to change the app uh, component HTML, app component uh, TypeScript file. Instead of calling 8080 here, we need to port you 00, which is the port that uh, runs the angular of your application and now the endpoint is not anymore slash user by slash api slash user let's stop the spring boot application run it again the spring boot application starts without any problem let's switch to the browser and let's check on the localhost 8080 we don't have anything on slash api we see the application running so the change that we have made to the application.properties uh, reflected correctly. Last step is to start the front-end application, the Angular 2 application. From the terminal, type npm start. This we call the command that we have changed inside the package.json. And actually we can see here that it's loading the proxy configuration JSON that we have created. The server starts without errors on the port 4200. As we expected, application is there as also calling our backend. This is the information returned by our Spring Boot application. And on the 4200, on the port 4200, we have our Angular application, and on the port 8080, we have our Spring Boot application. So we have the Angular application working alongside uh, with the Spring Boot application. We still have the front-end folder inside the Spring Boot project, but actually right now the application, the Angular 2 application could be in any folder. They don't depend anymore one from each other. Pro and cons of the external approach. The pro are that we have an automatic refresh of the browser when we change the Angular 2 application. There is a good separation between the backend and the front-end. And we don't have problems of scalability because we can call multiple backends. The cons of this approach is that you need to deploy two applications, the backend and the frontend application.